In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to apply a 3D effect and then how to edit that 3D effect to either text or objects. So let's go to page 2 here and we'll just type in, say, 3D. This is a simple example of what we want to do here. I'll make this a bit bigger. I might make it bold. And uh, we'll put it in the middle of our page like this. And I'll zoom in a bit to see it a bit better. OK. So we want to apply a 3D effect to this text here. So we select the text like this. We come over to this fly out over here and we come down to 3D effect. We simply click on that and our text is put in 3D effect mode. Now once we do that, it's no longer text, it's a 3D modeling effect. So make sure if you bring in any text that you have it as you want to actually uh, apply it. Okay, so we've got this text here or this 3D effect. We'll go to object mode here and we can position it around as you can see. If I go into node edit mode up here, I now see these gizmos. And I can just move this node around as you can see and I can see all the different positions as so. So this particular node here gives me a lot of control about how I view this 3D effect as you can see like that. Now as always in Vinyl Mass you get the second row of tools which are related to whatever you're working on as we can see them up here and it's all pretty straightforward. We can come up here and we can uh, extend the extrusion depth as so etc. We can uh, bend the object like this this sort of bend effect as you can see like this. Obviously this works on much longer text or a longer object but you can still apply it to a, to a like two characters as so. We can set our background or our extruded color so I can just select this here and I can say uh, change this color to something else like this. So I could make it red for example. Okay. I can set the face color so I could make it say some cyan color or um, some sort of yellow colour here like this. So we can get this sort of effect like so. And we can just reposition this anytime we want to. Now this positioning we can also do numerically so we can actually type in values. We'll use these up and down buttons like so. Spin this thing around wherever we want to see it etc etc etc. So we can position, we've got a lot of control how we position our 3D effect either with this gizmo or these tools here. We can set the brightness so we can make everything much brighter as you can see or make it much darker as you can see there. You can go very dark if you want to. So, so we can affect the actual darkness of our extruded uh, section. We can also set um, the shading amount. So at the moment it's set to 100%. If I set the shading amount to say 10%, you can see here that it's not, doing, not applying much shading to this particular extrusion here. If I set it to say 50%, you can see it's starting to bring in the shading effect as you can see so we're seeing some highlights around here and some darkening off and the higher we go the more shading is applied and if you go over 100% you start getting these artifacts so it's probably best to leave that at 100% okay so we've got a control over how the, our colors our positions and how far we um, shade things and how bright things are so these are the sorts of controls we have with this, these 3D effects now there's some more advanced tools here we can change this, for example, if we wanted to cut this out, we might want to make it two-tone, as you can see. So we've just got two uh, colours here, and we can just send this to our vinyl cutter and cut it out. That's one way of doing it. Another thing we've got is this single colour business here, which again, similarly, you can cut this out, but it's just using a single colour for our uh, extrusion here. And we can modify and play around with our settings to change the effects that we get here, or as we had it before in full colour, as so. So this is something you probably potentially convert this to a bitmap and print it out or print it out as it is. It just depends. I'll show you some advantages of converting 3D text to bitmaps in a moment. Okay. Also have things like our lens scale as you can see which affects the uh, the way this uh, thing, uh, how we view this and the shadow and the depth. Th th these things are applied when we change our lighting. So at the moment it's set to automatic. If I set this to say logo view or logo effect you can see now we get a different sort of uh, looking effect and we get this new node up here which affects our shadow position. Let's zoom out a little bit so I can show you that. So we go back to advanced and you can see we've got a cast shadow here set it with an offset of 5% and as I increase that, that bring, uh, sets the cast shadow further down. So let's bring that back to say 0% so I can make the point here. I can grab this node up here as so and I can actually affect the position of the cast shadow. And as I do this, you'll see the actual effect itself gets changed as well because what we're doing is we're changing the position of the light source. And by changing the position of the light source, we get a car shadow behind here like so. And we also get a different effect on our extrusion here, as you can see. 
Now I can also set these this, this particular node's position up here numerically using these tools here, as you can see like this. So that's what these tools do. They affect these particular um, this, the, the, the light source's position. As you can see, their X, the X and Y position. We can still rotate and move this thing around and see it in different positions, as you can see like this. So you have a lot of control on how you want this thing to look. And of course, if we bring this up like this, you then start seeing this colour coming back into this uh, particular object here. And we can also set this thing to be on a wall-mounted effect here, like so. Now, the wall-mounted effect, it's a little bit unclear to some people what this actually means, so I'll just sort of do an example where I can... I'll just bring these uh, amounts back a little bit to show you what I mean by this. OK. The wall-mounted effect is, is, is if this particular 3D effect is actually glued onto a wall. Now, one way of showing you that is to actually draw out a uh, square here, as so. I'll send this to the back, as you can see there, and I'll make it white. Uh, I'll make it light grey, let's say, and I'll come down here to perspective, and I'll give it a 2D perspective, as so, and I'll make it more suitable to our particular job that we've got in our position, just to make the point here. I'll just need to. Uh, modify this object's actual position so it looks like it's actually on a wall. As you can see it's now starting to come in here. And if I just adjust this like this and bring that down as so, what we're doing here, if I zoom in, you can see how this, this piece now is starting to look like it's actually glued onto this piece of uh, grey material here. So if I zoom out a little bit because the, the light source is coming down, this 3D word here is glued onto this grey piece and this is the wall mounted shadow effect and this is what wall mounted means. So when we're in node edit mode and we're talking about wall mounted here, that's what we're talking about. That's, that's the shadow that we're actually affecting there. And this is affected by this particular node as well, as I've been showing you, and you can uh, numerically adjust these things. And of course, the different different uh, positions you use will give you different effects. So that's what wall mounted shadow means. That gives you an idea of what that actually is referring to. So we can either set this as a um, car shadow, as so, and we just remove that background there and we get this effect, or we can do as I just showed you the wall mounted effect. And this node affects both of those uh, those shadows. So that explains how we create the 3D effect and how we start editing this thing. We've also got front view. Uh, this doesn't actually have, this removes the shadow effect, so you get this sort of, um, this brighter effect that you can see here, and it sort of locks the shadow into position. So that's another, another uh, option you've got there. Okay, and if I go back to logo effect, that's where I can actually start fiddling around with this, um, this shadow. Now I can turn the shadow off as well, so I don't have to have a shadow, as you can see. So I have these sorts of controls here. So that's how we do those 3D effects like that, as you can see. Now, you'll also know that uh, from seeing some of the, um, the the example jobs that we give you from the samples folder in Vinyl Master, that we see different uh, effects on the front, on the face here of these things. Now that's very easy to achieve. And I want to show you how to do that very quickly. I'll just get this position that I'm actually looking for here. So I'll make it just like this. I want to show you how you can actually set an effect on this, on the, on the front fascia of the panel here. So what I'll do is I'll just take a, a copy of this. I'll just press plus on the keyboard and take a copy of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the extrusion. So I'm going to set this to zero up here. So I've just got my actual curve shape that I've got in my 3D effect. I'm going to come up to Curves here, I'm going to convert this to Curves. I'll press Control q on the keyboard, so this becomes Curves. I'll just set it to that colour I had before. It was roughly that yellow colour like that. It doesn't really matter what the colour is, because what I'm going to show you here is this, this quite neat little trick. I'll just come here and I'll just apply a preset, uh, ever-favourite gold uh, that I like to apply to things as so, and we can see this gold effect here. Now I can just come along here and position this like so, on this job like this, I'll just set my nudge to very, uh, very small nudge, and that way I can just slightly nudge this in position, 
and I'll just zoom out to all and then I'll just zoom into this part here and you can see here what we've actually achieved here we've actually put on an effect on the front of this effect so we've done like a composite sort of effect here now the great thing with this is, is that what I can do now is I can say copy this whole thing like so and move it off uh, and then I can say just click on the uh, 3D effect and I can actually change say its extrusion colour and I can make say a blue colour and sometimes blue and gold work better together as so so these are the sorts of things you can do you can actually grab the front fascia of your 3D effect then apply one of these um, I'll just select one apply one of these presets to it and you can use any preset you like of course I mean there's you know hundreds of these things and you can create them yourself click accept and now we and I just might have to nudge that just a little bit to get rid of the yellow behind there but you can see what you can do there and sometimes if you want to uh, include the 3D effect in another effect you're doing and you want to get the edges as smooth as possible that's easy you just select the whole thing like this I mean you might want to take a copy of it okay and I'll just put that up out of the way grab the whole thing like this go to images up here go to convert to bitmap and you can just leave the default settings and, you, and I'll zoom in on that and you can just see how unbelievably nice that is see how smooth that is I mean these are fantastic effects you can create and it's really you know anything you can think of you can really do uh, you know there's just your imagination and some amazing things you can create and I've given you some examples of just some simple things I've done like in this 3D effects thing which as I say you have in your samples folder of these sorts of things and I've actually done this in three pages to show you that these are 3D effects these are all real that no, nothing's contrived here uh, and I've just done exactly what I've just shown you before I've converted all these things to curves and I've then just applied that default preset effect that gold effect here that's all I've done uh, put them together on this page and you get this effect and then if I select over all these things and go convert to bitmap go OK and let that process you can see just how smooth it becomes as it's processed that and I can zoom in and you can see these effects you can create I mean they really are quite spectacular and then you can print this out to a large format printer or you can create artwork for your clients um, you can create amazing logos for your uh, you know for your customers so the 3d effects used in conjunction with the um, I'll just go back to this page used in conjunction with uh, the these preset effects or effects that you create for example and you see this preview here um, any of these things you can do yourself um, and you, you can just come in here and obviously go to your shading tools and you can start fiddling around with uh, these effects here and change them to anything you want as you can see so that's how the 3D effects work um, and just try to uh, experiment with them I think the, the easiest way to learn these 3D effects is just basically make them and apply them and uh, that's it that's the end of this lesson